in your conversation with Danielle, you cited three things. You talked about investor nerves, rising debt levels, and concerns about the real estate market. And you've said in the past that you're not looking actively for opportunities in Canada's housing market, short opportunities, that, that is. Has that changed at all? <laughs> Actually, that's a funny question because, um, you know, this morning before the market opened, I tweeted that we would be shorting something in Canada. And I haven't seen that kind of social media traction um, in a long time. And there was also, as I think you've covered, uh, a stock that we had no intention of shorting that, for whatever reason, reacted very negatively to that. And it makes me think that maybe Canada is the hottest market in the world right now for short sellers. Or if it's not, it really could be. Yeah, and you're talking about Element Fleet Management, uh, which of course is not uh, the stock that you were shorting. You were shorting Asanko Gold, which I want to come to with you in a moment. But I want to ask you more broadly about the Canadian housing market, because one of the things that you said really struck me that uh, this idea, this prevailing sense in Canada that we won't see uh, something akin to what we saw in the housing crisis in 2008 down in the U.S., that that can't happen here. Does that almost bolster uh, your case that it actually could? Yeah, I think any time you hear on a widespread basis people saying it's different this time, it's different here, that means that it will be no different and eventually there's going to be a bad ending to it. I mean, that sort of, there are laws of economics and those laws eventually apply. And um, I mean, one thing that was pretty interesting for me with Canada, um, and to be clear, I have not, I've not looked at Canada closely, but the last time I was, I was up there was actually 2011, um, had some meetings after Sinoforce. And I actually saw, there was, I was in a building that was owned by one of the large banks, and this is a couple of years after the financial crisis. There were these ads everywhere saying borrow to get ahead, and we're really encouraging debt-fueled consumption, and it just struck me as bizarre given what the U.S. had just gone, to, uh, gone through. So, you know, several years later, um, you've had that. You've had real estate being pushed up in part by foreign buyers, which I think creates this frenzy. And a lot of Canadians have taken on debt to participate. So, yeah, the, the conditions, again, from a you know, pretty distant perspective, but the conditions seem to exist for there to be some real pain inflicted on the market, um, probably in the not too distant future. So what concerns do you have about regulation in Canada? The institutions that are meant to keep uh, these issues in check. I know that you've talked about the regulatory structure here in the past and how much uh, of it re resides at the provincial level. How much of a problem is that in your view? Well, uh, so I'm not an expert on the regulatory environment in Canada, but I mean, I can tell you that um, there are certainly some provincial regulators in Canada, and I'm speaking about the, the market regulators, that are more capable than others. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's a pretty curious situation to me. It's, I guess the analog would be in the U.S. if the states had their own securities regulators, which, I mean, there are, they do regulate companies, but, I mean, the SEC is obviously the, you know, the regulator of the market. So that's the problem. When you have differing levels of resources and sophistication, um, yeah, there's probably a lot that could fall through the cracks in Canada.